Okay, so there's plenty of new amazing features in A Sprite, like layers hidden within a frame, hidden color properties, dark mode, tile map system and more, so let's jump into it. If you ever find yourself looking at an A Sprite and think it's just too bright, especially during those nightly hours, well, now it finally has the dark mode. To change it, just go to Edit, Preferences, and right here you have the theme mode light and dark. Just click on dark, okay, and you are good to go. Another new feature is skew transformation. If you select your object and press Ctrl T, you know the usual stuff, you can resize it, you can rotate it as well, but now you can also skew the image. If you just hover above one of these points, you will be able to skew your image based on the pivot point that has been placed. If you change the pivot point to somewhere else, let's say the middle, of course, it will skew the point from that pivot point. What's also new regarding this transformation tool is that you can click any one of these rectangles and notice what will happen here above in the properties. Now you have input fields for all these. These are the position values, this is the size value and rotation value. So if I change the rotation value, let's say to 90 degrees, it will of course rotate my sprite by 90 degrees. If I change the position, let's say from 13 to let's say 20, it will change the position. And of course, if I want to change the size from 24, let's say to 36, it's also gonna do that as well. I love this next feature so much. Finally, we can change how long a specific tag lasts in our animation by just hovering above the end of it and we can extend and shorten it. This applies to both ends, okay? No longer do we have to go into each specific tag and change what frame to what frame it goes to. Okay, since we're talking about tags, let's cover a new tag property and that would be the repeat property. This will determine how many times your tag will repeat before it continues on on the timeline. So right here I have two simple spheres. On the top layer, this sphere goes from left to right and we have just 8 frames of it. See? From left to right. And on the first 4 frames, this bottom sphere is just quickly rotating, okay? It just goes in the circle. So since my loop property repeats 4 times, our animation timeline will be stuck in our loop for four times within these four frames before it continues on and finishes the timeline. So let's count this. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and then after fourth one, it just continues. Another great feature is picking colors from your desktop or other windows. So let's say I wanna pick this blue color up here. I will go on my color picker tool. I will click and hold my mouse button and now I can drag my color picker outside the sprite and it will still catch colors. This is quite useful. Now let's talk about one of my new favorite features and let me tell you why. Suppose you have an object that is rotating around another object. Let's say this red sphere around this green object. How would you do it up until this point? Well, there are only two ways. Way number one, you would have this red object on a layer above the green object, so that it's in front, you have no issues. However, when it goes behind an object, you just have to erase portion of this red object. What's the problem here? Well, if I decide during my animation that I need to change the position of my green object, and that happens quite often, now I have to redraw this red object all over again. Now, this isn't a big issue if this is a simple object like a sphere, but it certainly becomes a bigger issue if you have more complex objects interacting with each other. The way I would fix this in a way is that I have two layers. One is below my green object and one is above it. And when the object has to go behind an object, it's on a layer below it. And when it needs to go in front of my object, I just switch it to a layer above my green object. This way, I still retain the original shape of my object that goes behind, so I work in a non-destructive way. However, what's the big issue here? Well, this is a small project. I only have few frames and few layers to work with. But if you are talking about a larger scene where I have 50 layers, things like this become very difficult to manage. And this is what the new feature of A Sprite fixes. In this new way, each specific frame has a property called Z-Index. So if I double click any of these frames, you will notice two properties, opacity and Z-index. Z-index is basically the position of this frame in regards to other layers. For example, if I change this Z-index to zero, 
meaning its default position, you will notice that it's still above our green object. However, if I move it just on a Z index minus one, it goes behind our object. So it's basically like doing this, but only for our specific frame, okay? And if I keep changing my Z index position, it will go even behind our background. Now, if you notice that there's an opacity here, a simple way to use it is also fade in or fade out. Now, this is a new example. Up until this point, you have to create multiple layers and on each of these, you would just put one frame. So let's say I wanna do fade in. You see this effect, okay? Fade in or fade out. One layer would hold only one frame at a specific opacity. As you can notice, this gets really hard to manage. Even if I group in the layers, if I want to later change on how many layers I'm doing the fade in or fade out transition, it just gets more and more complicated. Now, thanks to this new way, we go in and change a specific property of opacity for each specific frame and voila, you get the same effect but you're keeping everything on the same layer. One thing they could have done is you see this little Z icon. This means that this cell is being changed by the Z index. I would have loved to see if they did the same thing, but for opacity, perhaps a letter O on this left side, just so we know what happens. But regardless, this brings us to another new feature, and that would be the hidden properties. So if you go here and hover, we have the user data. So if you click on it, it will open up two new things. You have user data, which you can type anything you want as a string, but more importantly, you have this color option. If you choose this color and choose any color, you can basically create any one that you want, okay? It will change the color of this specific frame. So let's say I wanted to know, okay, on this frame, my screen is completely black. Well, I would just pick the black color and now I would know, hey, this is where the fade in starts. And let's say I wanted to mark where my fade in ends. I would just pick this frame, change the color to white. And there we go. So now I have my two frames and I know, okay, on this frame, my fade in starts and on this one it ends. Now this hidden property doesn't apply only to a specific frame. Oh no, 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 no. It also applies to layers. So if you want to change the color of your layer, again, access the user data and you can change the color. This is also a new cool way to change and organize your project. And you can do the same thing to your overall project. So you have this sprite, you can go to sprite, properties, and you can change its color. So let's say I want to make it blue, okay? So now you can see it's been changed to blue color. Another great animation feature is the preview window and how it's been updated. And let's say I wanted to focus on my character. Up until this point, I would have to manually go and uncheck all of these layers so I can focus on my character. But then I lose kind of the vision of how it looks like in the overall scene. However, this time around, if I wanted to focus on my character, I can just press Shift F7 and it will hide all layers, but only in the preview window. And now I can see how my character looks like in the scene. And I can also see in the preview how my character looks by himself. And this can apply to any layer within the animation. And finally, let's talk about the new biggest feature and that's the tile map system. Of course, a sprite already had it for quite a while in its alpha and beta version, so you're probably already familiar with it, but nonetheless, let's go over it. So if you want to create a tile map, you can go to layer, new, new tile map layer. You can name it and you can decide how large each tile is going to be. By default, it's 16 by 16 pixels. And you will notice that a new window pops up and that would be the tile map window. So you have the color palette and you have the tile palette. So let's talk about how this function, both of these. You have three options up here. First one, it says modify existing tiles. The second one, modify them if needed. And the third one is basically just stack them. Let's go over each of these in greater detail. Let's create a base of three by three tiles for our tile set. And you can notice that automatically it generates new things. You can do this via the second or third option. And if you don't have any tiles whatsoever, you can also do it with the first one. So let's go on the second one. So I'll just create this tile just quickly. There we go. Notice what's gonna happen. If I use the first option, it says modify existing tiles and don't create new tiles automatically. If I choose this option and I try to draw outside my existing tiles, nothing is going to happen 
because a sprite doesn't recognize this empty tile as an empty tile it just doesn't recognize it at all it's basically nothing the only exception is as i've shown if you don't have any tiles whatsoever the second option says modify and reuse existing tiles and create or delete tiles if needed slash possible this says if the a sprite recognizes one of these tiles it's going to modify it so for example if i start drawing on this tile you will see that it automatically updates all of these right and if a sprite doesn't recognize that the dial already exists it's going to generate a new one as you can see and the third option is don't modify existing tiles but rather generate and stack new tiles automatically so in this case if a sprite recognizes that you have already this tile and if i try to change it it's going to generate a new tile so let's focus on this middle tile if i click something new it's going to generate a new tile if i do it again it's going to generate another one and another one and so on why is this useful well in case you want to generate variation tiles if you have a tile that you don't want to be repeated on your whole tile set in your games this is a very quick way to create variation tiles and now to actually paint tiles you need to click this little button right here and notice what will happen to the color palette below it changes from the colors to tiles and now you can actually paint your tiles that you need you can use the color picker as a tile picker tool as well and now if i just want to paint these things happen okay and you can quickly use this to prototype your levels and so on and if you notice something is wrong like this left tile doesn't connect quite as well well i can just go and go back to my painting mode by clicking this button again keeping in mind which mode i have chosen in this case i want to use modify existing tiles only and i can just connect all of these and it will update my tile set and fix this mistake on all of these and these are the basics of the tile map system and i hope you liked it so these are some of the new cool features in a sprite of course there are some others like new scripting capabilities like the canvas widget and tabs nonetheless i think this new a sprite version 1.3 brings a lot of new features and if you want to find out some of the other tricks and tips i have please look at other videos right here on the screen and as always relax enjoy and have fun